Hello everyone! Right, let's pull this up on the iPad and double make sure it's working. Um, uh, I did hear that last week's uh, video was a bit blurry and I wanted to look at it and it was. So um, we've just kind of changed a little bit. We're closer to the window. Hopefully uh, that helps because, you know, closer to the outside means that you get more Wi-Fi, I think. Um, if not, I'm just telling myself that because that's how it's going to work. Um, if your Facebook is a bit blurry today on the Creative Family Group, I am also recording well, like also live on YouTube, so that is an option for you. Uh, I just realised I have the door open to my laundry. Give me a second. Sorry, about that. You will probably don't want to hear my washing machine. Um, welcome, welcome, Sandy. Right. So today we're starting off in our new art journal. It's one of the Art by Miley ones. I have the tag here. I did open it beforehand just to make sure that, um, well, I had kept it in plastic, which means that mold hadn't got on it, which was lovely. Uh, but also just to uh, get like a few things sorted. Um, my iPad is playing up lots, so I might have to flick over to YouTube. Um, anyway, so this is the ring band of art journal that we're going to be using from here in. Oh, good morning, Robin. And I had a bit of a quick look this morning at it. It's really nice. It has this sleevey thing, so then if you do use like collage or you've done some fussy cutting you want to use on your art journal pages, you can store it in here. Like, look how cool that is. And you just zip that back up. All that, you can keep your paintbrushes with it. And it's a ring binder. I didn't realize that ring binder meant ring binder um, until about 10 minutes ago when I checked this thing out. Oh, hello, Robert. Oh, we have two Robins. Oh, we might have to start using the names. Okay. So... We're actually going to create with our piece of, look how good that watercolour paper is, by the way, it is beautiful. Um, it, it's really nice quality. Um, with our pages outside of the art journal from here on in, just because this means that we don't actually have to do any work on the spine from here on in. Like this art journal here, we won't have to worry about if our art disrupts the spine of the journal because it's a binder. Look how cool is this? This is an amazing invention. I didn't know art journals existed like this. <laughs> I will be completely honest with you. But like this is genius. Marlin deserves like oh, a lot of credit for it. So we're gonna take our lovely page of watercolor paper out for our first page ever in um, this art journal. It also means that we can use a little bit more thicker collage in the journal that we're going to be using for the next, I don't know how many other pages we've got. Probably a good year, I reckon, we'll get out of this one, which is nice. Well, good morning, Tash. So, um, by, and also by taking it out, it means that it's not going to seep through to the other pages. So if we do use something like a bit of an ink at one point that seeps through, we've got no problem there. Oh, good morning, Diane. And let's see if we can get this iPad to work one minute, sorry. I'm hoping that my iPad starts to work today. Okay, anyway, so today I thought that we just could do a bit of a mixture of everything that we've been up to um, in the last few weeks, kind of. I've also done some fussy cutting of butterflies. So um, we're going to do, we're going to use our fussy cutting of butterflies and just Kind of get used to what this watercolor paper can do, like test its tolerance today. Um, with all new art journals, that's kind of what I do. The first few pages, I go in and I test the tolerance of it and like how far I can stretch a piece of paper and all the rest of it in it. So then I know like kind of what limitations I want to create in that art journal. Um, but I think that we'll probably be able to do anything but put this in a peak, put this in a bucket of water and leave it for about three hours. Like even then it probably would still keep its 
structure because it is that good quality of wood toilet paper. So I've just got this piece of rice paper here and I've also got, we will have to make sure, we might have to stab the holes through a few times but that's okay. And I want to have another go at using a stencil. I've tried to use it a few times in class. Whenever I use it in class for some reason it doesn't work and then I go and use it on like a project outside of class and it works perfectly fine. So I think it's just being a bit complacent. Um, <laughs> Oh, it's probably me, the user. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to try using this one here again because it, it makes a gorgeous pattern. It's absolutely, it's 100% beautiful. I just can't seem to get it to work on classes. So um, we're going to try this again. Oh, good morning, Father. Good morning, Tanya. Good morning, Chrissy D. And we've also got uh, these stamps here, which I have not to but I would like to, so I'm going to. So, yeah. So today we're just playing around. If you do have anything you want me to try, just let me know. Um, it's purely up to you guys. Right, let's start. And once again, if your um, Facebook is playing up, you can go to YouTube. It's quite easy. Just... Uh, one minute, let me just go to my own YouTube here. Um, my mom keeps telling me that I need to explain to people how to get to this. Um, just because my YouTube channel doesn't have many videos on it yet, so it's a little bit hard to find. Purely my fault, not yours. Um, so yeah, so if you just type in, you've got to unfortunately type my full name and name it on. Not sure. Art, and that normally comes it up, and it didn't search it because oh, what am I having a day today? Third time of chanting. Put the actual search button instead of enter. That might work a bit better. Oh. There we go, and one minute, wait for it to pop up. Do, 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 do. Go here, and this will get eventually easier, hopefully. And then this one here, if I can get it to open. I also haven't updated the paperwork for last week's class. I'm sorry about that. I kind of forgot about it, um, but I am. Good oh, morning, Sandra. Um, I am gonna do that today, just because um, last week was very much a hectic week for me. Uh, I've been working on a project with some um, with one of my old uni friends, and we um, we handed it in this week. So it was very it was an amazing project, but um, yeah, just. Took up a bit of time. Oh, morning, Lorraine. So, let's start, shall we? So, we've got uh, this, this, this. I remember what I was gonna do. Right, so we just wanna kind of get a decent line. Good morning, everyone. It's not that I'm in bed. <laughs> oh, I can imagine, can I can only imagine I'm freezing my butt off in Queensland. I can't imagine what you guys are. Feeling like it knows me. So I think we might just do like a full coverage of this, but like make it so it has crinkles in it when we uh, stick it down, kind of giving it a bit of crack into it, a bit of wallpaper type of work. So let's open up our bottle of gel medium mat. And yes, of course, silly me, I did not deal with this issue last week. Um, as I do this again, like the second week in a row on a class video, uh, just a heads up, next week we are, um, oh it's actually a piece of rice paper stamp, it's really nice. Um, it's one of the stamp area ones. We uh, next week, uh, 
doing this class on Thursday morning. And that is because next weekend I'm moving back to Gladstone. Um, I finish up my job on Wednesday and I uh, go home on Sunday, Nelson hands the key back on uh, Monday and everything is looking good. All I need to do is, uh, I think my mum even arranged for me to get a haircut because I haven't had a haircut for, I think it's nearly two years now since I've had, I oh know, a year and a half, I believe. It's been since I've had a haircut. So for us to get this creasy type texture that I was talking about with the rice paper, because it's very opaque, I still want to get that texture in there. So what I want to do is um, just give our watercolour sheet of paper a thick coating of some of our gel matte medium paste. Not the liquidy stuff we were using like last week. We're going to use the paste. This week we're back to the paste. Um, by using the paste, it means that the creases that we form will be a bit more permanent. If you were to use the liquid, the rice paper is just going to completely absorb it and actually not stick to the watercolour paper. And the watercolour paper might absorb it a lot as well because it is very much high quality in the art journal that we're using now. Um, sorry, I just missed a few comments. Uh, I have come up with another solution for stopping lines from sticking. It is use a baby, a dry baby. Like, oh! Smart idea. Yes, UPA. Um, Pam, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, that's nice as well. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do it because I said I'm gonna have to do it every week and then I forget about it because, yeah, but I am gonna have to do that this week. Right. Because it's getting to the point of that. So I'm just going to tear it up the top here. Because I just kind of want. I want it to still make it to the top bits. But. Have that bit of like. Flaking I guess you could call it. Making that. Natural type of texture. We've got. Okay. 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 So then it doesn't have a hard edge. And we're able to do this with the rice paper because now it's wet from the glue. It's just got that little bit more rippability. Beforehand, it was very hard to uh, rip nicely. It's better to cut rice paper than ripping it unless you've got it absolutely like wet. So, there we go. And it does also test um, how well the pattern is printed onto the rice paper, but it is very well printed on. So, uh, I'm just going to, oh, it is beautiful paper, isn't it? I'm just going to lift that up so that you can see. I don't know if you can see how well that texture looks, but it's pretty good. And then now that we've got all of that there. Oh, my video is like half an hour behind. It's like about 10 minutes behind, but that is okay. Right, so we've got all those pieces there. Now what I want to do is, I just want to come in and kind of do like an inking technique, but um, just to add some color in there. I'm thinking, oh, I don't know. We've got purple and I've also got these blue and pink Butterflies, but I've also got brown. Oh, we've got color suggestions here. We could come in and do um a bit of floral orange, just you know, to make it real out there. But oops, the pen. I can't see my paints are all. In a tub now, so it's very. 
Oh, sorry. Oh, if anyone rocked up a little bit later than what I did, because I was a late for <laughs> me being late. Who would have thought? Um, we're using the new art journal. So we're into a new art journal now. Um, it's the Art by Marlene Ringbound Art Journal. I've got the label. See, I kept the label. Oh, we could actually put the label on our page. But I kept the label for this very reason. And if you just have a look, it's a ring binder. So we can actually take the pages out, which means that when we're creating, we can use thicker text, we can use thicker collage now. And we can also um, do the, um, like we can take it out and create and then put it back in once we're done. Meaning that it's not so, uh, like things won't bleed through and all the rest of it, um, which is amazing. And we won't have to do like how to fix an art journal spine every second week. Um, but yeah, so the paper size of this one here is 210 by 297 uh, millimeters so that's 21 centimeters by 29.7 centimeters oh it is it's amazing art journal i didn't realize that ring bound meant like it was a ring bound like i did one of those fully out ones until i opened it 10 minutes before class i was like oh it's amazing so yeah um it it's beautiful and yeah Thank you. So let's keep going, shall we? We are up to choosing a pink color to add the highlights. I think I might go with this burgundy just to keep within the colors we've got, or maybe a yellow. Um, we could go with like a green color. I know, I know. I I didn't I've never had an art journal where I've been able to remove the pages, like physically remove the pages. So um honestly it's amazing. I actually think this is a smart journal idea. I'm just trying to find hmm, I can't find the color I was looking for. I did however find my my neo green. So we could use some neon green to highlight it, but it might look like booger. Maybe not. What about a vintage feel? A vintage feel. Oh, we could do a vintage feel. Hey, feel those colors. One minute, let me pull them a brown. Let me go pink. Here we go. I've got my brown. Let's give it a bit of a vintage vibe. So we're going to go with some brown. And while we're at it, I mean, I also use this one because it's a bit more of a vintage blue type color, but we'll just stick that one there for later. So we're just going to come in with a little bit on uh, the tip of our finger. Now you can also do this with like an ink pad if you want to. You just got to make sure the matte medium is completely dry before going in or else you will ruin your ink pad. Or you can do it with a with like the paint on the end of a sponge or something if you're not really up to using your hands. Um, I do understand that some people don't like creating with their hands. I completely get that. Um, it's like when I do massive collage works, I'm kind of like, why do I use my hands? Why can't I use a palette knife like normal people? But I do enjoy painting with my fingers, painting with uh, the paintbrushes that go on gaming or something. I think that's what my mom says. I don't know where she got it from. She probably came out with it herself because she's a very smart woman. Um, and then we're just going to come in. And it's just highlighting where we've gone about getting that texture. And just hang out. A very smart idea. We don't normally do a lot of um, vintage pages do we? So we might stick to the vintage vibe today. Stick within the vintage. Right, here we go. It would match our butterflies perfectly. Right. 
So I've also kept my collage a bit away from the rings just because we do want to be able to stick this back in to the ring vinyl. That's the only thing we're going to have to be wary of is the rings. But we can come back in and punch the holes in later, but um, just be easier if we didn't have to do that on the first page, you know. Right, here we go. So now that we've got that there, what I want to come and do is I want to apply this first pan down. It does mean that we're going to have to work a little bit carefully. I think you rub in uh, for like the next few uh, layers of this page, but I want the layers to be intermingled, so I have to do this pattern now. Um, it will make it harder, but I think that's okay. So what I've got is my modeling paste, which is my lovely huge jar, and then I'm going to grab out my palette knife which I did have a few seconds ago with my glue. Oh, I put it up here. Right. Sorry, I'm so used to standing, so when I put things on top of the frame to keep like gluey palette knives and stuff away from each other, from away from our page, I could easily find it, but I'm sitting at the moment, which is odd because I don't really sit and create. Um, I haven't done a lot of painting the last two weeks though, so I haven't really noticed just because, um, I've been getting ready to move and I had obviously that mold problem which I still have and um the project I was talking about that we, I, we finally finished yesterday at the night it was due so that was fun right so we're just going to come in and oh And by having a lot on our palette knife, we're able just to keep on going down. And we're also doing this at this layer here because there's not too much paint down, which means it won't um, mingle or seep in the paste with that color. So it will very much stay white or the same color as your modeling paste. You might have a different color of scene. Uh, I think Mott might have a black modeling paste, I'm pretty sure. You can also do this with gesso, it just won't be as uh, thick of 3D as it is. Um, now you do want to wash your stencil after doing this and um, when you do do stenciling with a palette knife and modeling paste, you want to go on the one direction. You don't want to kind of go on multiple because there are ways to that's when it starts to seep under and you get paste on both sides of your stencil so by just going in one direction it means that uh, it works a lot better so we're just going to peel that one there um, back a bit and there we go so I'll lift that one up so that you can see how that looks um, so we've got our pattern and as you can see it looks really nice See, I told you it was a nice pattern. I just haven't been working on casters when I used it. Which is completely my fault. Right, here we go. So now that we've got that done, what I'm going to come in and do is just add a few of words. And this is just going to help with the vintage vibe. I want to come in and add a few uh, just bits of collage randomly. I guess you could call it across the page just to highlight some of the areas we've already made and then go in and add some painting because I want to give that modeling paste as much time to dry naturally as possible. We can heat to it. Um, it just um, 
it won't dry in the middle when it gets heat to so obviously you will still have to leave it to dry dry I say I know it's a it's a really nice panel of a stencil. Um it's one of the same Fury ones. If my scribe could chuck the link in, that would be amazing. I'm just tearing up my ghouls right now. So There are a few other ones by Stamperia that are quite similar in design. They're like, they've got like a nice like detailed small layering. Not like the classic bulky thick ones we've got, but um, that some of the other brands do. Which are really nice, don't get me wrong, but um, yeah, the Stamperia ones are just a little bit more detailed. Oh, that's what I find anyway. Like a mosaic of passion. That's what I was doing, but oh, <laughs> I know. Uh, he still didn't get the hint, so I don't know. Um, they might be in the stencil section or in the stamp period section. I will be adding them to my tab on the online store this afternoon. So, um, like I said, I'm doing paperwork this afternoon. Uh, well, not paperwork. I'm just updating everything can making sure that I pull the photos up for the last few classes because I do think I've missed a few it was like um last weekend was the virtual retreat for any of you who didn't go um and I created all these projects on the Saturday and then I kind of forgot to post them and then for some reason I couldn't get them to post on Monday I had to post them out on like a schedule basis type thing because my Facebook was being weird um <laughs> I think that was just me being stressed though, so I just, yeah. Anyway, it was a fun moment. Um, so basically what I'm doing with the gauze here is I've just kind of pulled out a few layers because I've threaded it enough that I can pull out just like a few stringy bits. And I'm just sitting that where I want it to go and then I'm gonna glue it down. I'm not gonna glue it down just yet because like I said, I'm giving that modeling paste just a little bit of time to dry itself before I heat to it. It also means it's less likely to bubble. Don't get me wrong, I love the texture that I get when modeling paste bubbles, but at the same time, um, I definitely want it to try and dry naturally because that's the best way for art products to dry is naturally. Like that's what they're made for. Heat tools are just for all of us who are very much impatient folk who want to just keep creating and continue to create always. Oh, I know. Um, the butterflies I fussy cut before class today. I know I was very organized today. Surprise, surprise. Um, well, it is actually surprising. Most of the time we're running to get to class. Today we were just late because um, I did uh, my normal 12 minute mold treatment this morning but it took 15 minutes instead because it was just a few more um the little butterflies are from the lemon craft fussy cut books they're like the long ones um the long strippy ones uh i've got two so far i've got the blue and brown uh, version that has like the um a bit of like it's kind of like denim and lace type vibe to it with the butterflies in it. And then I also have the um, Lemon Craft, uh, the one with all the roses in it. I think we got a restock of that one in. I'm pretty sure it is if my scribe could do it, but um, he doesn't seem to be listening. So what we might come in and do is just add that link in ourselves. Um, it will take me but a moment, people. Uh, let me just... right. We'll find it as we go. Um, and then while we wait for that tab to vote, um, I will be finding that link for you guys. And then I think 
Um, we might not put these ones down, that one, pull that one down just yet, because I kind of want them to sit on top so that it's three there. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my heat tool, which if I turn around, it should be behind me. Oh, I think I might have accidentally moved it on myself. Like I said, I'm still getting used to my new setup. Um, yeah, not what I really wanted to do. Let's change my setup. But anyway, uh, here we go. So I'm just going to come in and heat my modeling paste a little bit with my collage laid out because it is sitting pretty firmly on there because the modeling paste is still wet. Um, and it's not really likely to dry in this weather. I'm not gonna lie, it's raining, so um, it's yeah, a bit more permanent. And we're not really trying to dry it to it's very cool, we just want it to be touch dry so that we can come in and add our rest of our layers. Get in there. So I'm just going to lift that up to show you what touch dry uh, modeling paste looks like. It's actually very nice. It gives it, it's like you can tell when it's dry on top, touch dry is what I call it, um, because it uh, becomes a matte type color to it. And let's see if we can get this thing up now. Stamp. Alright, as we, oh are we going for the stencil first or are we going, hold up, we might go for the butterfly bits. Right. So I wouldn't know Chloe, I'm a deep sleeper, I assume it was just like a bit of like like, I know it rained all night because it was still wet outside this morning, but I don't think it was heavy, heavy where I live in Brisbane. I think it was more of like a light type of misting. Like, there didn't seem to be any warnings on the radio when I went. Um, it's just been kind of raining consistently where I am. That's the main thing. So now I'm going to come in. I'm going to stick down my bits and pieces. So... To grab out with the, the gauze, we are going to switch sides. So with the gauze, we're going to use our acrylic, just so then um, it doesn't become too thickly layered. So it gives um, you can still get the texture of the gauze in. Um, just because if we were to use the paste when sticking down the gauze unfortunately the paste would just make it kind of like a flat mat we won't actually get any of the texture of the gauze so we just want to get all of that down pat i promise you i am getting the links for the uh butterflies it's just taking me uh, a few moments in between things because my internet is not great it's not gonna lie Just a whole new concept when it works. <laughs> right. And then we're just going to come in and stick that down here. And we just want to kind of stick down the main bits of the gauze. I still want it to be a little bit airy fairy. So just getting it at its joints is basically where we want to do what we want to do with this and with the um with the mat with the acrylic matte medium it just kind of goes down quite nicely and you don't have to spread it too well uh, it's the acrylic medium matte so the acrylic medium matte is very liquidy 
which is what I suggest when you're sticking things down like gauze. Um, it can also be a replacement for dimensional magic if you run out or your glossy accents. It's just a little bit more um, stronger. Um, whereas the number one that we use is the, the, the gel. So this is the acrylic, which is the liquid and the gel. So we use the gel normally because um, the acrylic tends to get absorbed quite fast with um, watercolour and rice paper, which are two of our main things we use to stick down onto, um, which means that the collage doesn't really stick that well, but when it comes to gauze and a few other things like doilies and tissue paper, this is the one you want to use. Um, so we're just going to come in and stick our butterflies down with our gel medium matte though, because we do want them to be a bit more permanent than the walls. So yeah, that's what that is. So there are like multiple mediums of glue. And then Um, so there we go, and now what we're going to come in and do is add our, some paints to our thing. We can add some more colour, I think, because we've got a lot of collage now. Hey, Dad, can you add in, now that you're here, um, the London Craft paper pads where these butterflies come from? Please? Please, but please, 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 please. Um, because I've been trying to get the link for the last, like, five minutes, and I'm going very slow at it, and I think the ladies are a bit annoyed at that, but I can't speed up that process. Um, now, what we want to do is we just want to pull out some of our vintage colours, so I'm thinking maybe, um, the lavender with this green with Kermit. Um, if you don't have the Up by Marlene, there are similar colours within the Montmartre range. I do know that. Um, I don't know what their names would be. I'm sorry. I need to make like a chart, a corresponding chart of all the colours. So then we can just use that and get the one and the one. Right, and maybe all of this. Okay, the pink. Go and grab out this wall. Um, um, right. Now that we've got our colours, because yeah, I just want some of those ones. I'm going to come in and just do a bit of adding of colour. So I'm going to come in, obviously. What I'm going to do in the first place. Um, this is our, I'm going to bring my water in here with my paintbrush. Yes, my butterflies are on and craft, but I need the paper pad link, Dad. They're from the. Oh, maybe they're not Lemon Craft. Maybe they're the other Polish brand. The ones with all the fussy cut books, Dad. I'm sure it's Lemon Craft. I'm just coming in and I'm adding some colour in between my butterflies and I just realised that this is not so much like brush that bring out that so I'm going to And this is just going to highlight the 
basic patterns. There we go. Ah, there we go. It's kind of what I was talking about, but yeah. And by doing this around where some of the patterns are from, or well, where the texture we've made from the stencil is, we're able just to see it a little bit better. Yeah, maybe it's just my bad eyesight not being able to see it that well, but. Gives it a bit more to go off of. There we go. And now I'm just going to come in with our fingers and add a bit more to that. And then we'll grab our tape brush back again and just come in. So I can hit my head to the wall there. Being really careful with the butter placement to make sure we keep the pattern and all the detail. And then I'm going to come in and just do this one and this one here. I think that rice papers are just good because they give you like kind of like a base layer for your palette on the rest of it. Your underside, if you know that you're not really good at um, being decisive with choosing colors and stuff like that, you can just um, put a rice paper down for some texture and like the first layer and you're good to go. So now that we've got that there, 
I think what I'm going to come in and do is just come back in with some of my brown again and just highlight some of what I've got there. a little bit more into the texture of this and fix it as well. Let's rub some of the butterflies, like get the butterflies a little bit more into the layers instead of on top. Now that we've got that, what I want to do is I want to come in with this green or yeah, with this green and just come in with our straight black paintbrush and just do a little bit of a brush strokes. And I'm just going to do three clusters like I normally do. Maybe not might dry what I've got first. If I keep adding colour, it might just. Um, the little stripes is just to add. Oh, uh, it's just like a quick pattern that I can do. Um, and I like it personally. It kind of gives the movement of the page, I guess. Um, and adds the colouring quite nicely and a bit sparing because sometimes you don't just want it in a block you want it a little bit more space to out um and i lack the confidence to draw on my most of the time but i can draw a little stripes so easy enough it's just kind of one of those patterns it's like i also like circles a lot we'll see in most of my artworks i do circles Flowers, butterflies, and stripes. Now, what I'm just going to do. I'm thinking maybe I'm thinking like a second. I'm just gonna grab out my six B pencil.
supposed to be I'm not too fast like this. I'm just doing this bit because I do want to add in the butterfly but I kind of want to make it um, a bit more of a drip style so I don't want to have it there like just blankly there. I want to make it a little bit more of like a drip watercolor so I want to get the outline and then come in and do all the bits and pieces so Yeah, triangles would work as well. It just depends on what you like to draw, I guess. Okay, right. So I'm going to come in and paint that one and then I'll do the other side of the butterfly. And I just want to do that in this purple to bring the purple back a bit. Or maybe in the dark brown. No, purple it is. Right. I think this might need to be pinned, but I don't exactly remember where I put the pins. Gosh, I hate packaging these up like that. Okay, so I'm just taking the top off because my nozzle on this paint tube is blocked with it, and I can't remember where I packed my pins. There we go. Easy enough, all fixed. Now that we've got that. Sorry, I'm just grabbing a little paintbrush. If I can find one. I'm sure it's more oh. power. Good. Right, here we go. Sorry about that. I was just trying to find my pen of paintbrushes and my paintbrushes are behind me. So I'm just going to come in. Paint. Not in full detail, but. One little bit. On this butterfly. Sorry. Something fucked in the comment section over there. Yeah. We drew on so and then okay, Nice. So I'm going to get the outline of where the butterfly is at. So then I can just do
Let's do this one. Um, thinking. I guess you could call it an Aaron's and Brown maybe. Oh no, it doesn't look very much like a butterfly anymore. I think we'll just to get it down. I'm just going to come in and remove some of that by just grabbing a piece of gauze and then some of the colour and then thinking I'm really trying for the vintage vibes today. Come in and add some of this purple up here, but get it to do some dripping for us. This watercolor paper is still holding up, this is amazing. Hmm. What we might come and do is we'll come and do some of those triangles for you tamer. Tamer, sorry. Oh, I'm gonna put it on my colour. Um I'm gonna the lavender paint is amazing. Sometimes it's hard to get a really nice purple. some triangles. And then I think what we need is just some of this desert type colour. I'm just going to do a few dots of them. It's just to ground it because we are doing it in a vintage colour palette. We do want to ground some of the pastels just with uh, a, two different browns. We've already got the really dark one on here. This is just the lighter one. It's just to give some grounding to it. Like bring it all together I guess. Could call it and then
up here. A bit of a big blob there, so then we can just. So, oh, this one here, this is the Desert Art by Marlin one. I am using most of my Art by Marlin paints today. Um, just because they're a bit. Um, they were on top actually, and I have more vintage colours in my Art by Marlin colour. my Art by Marlin. Gonna come and do is I'm just gonna grab um, the heat tool and dry this real quick and then do the last few layers. I'm sorry, this is gonna go over the aisle. I know I like start off with one or two and now I have lots of them that are just. They're good paints, all the mark mark ones. Like you just need a few of each just to get you going, I guess. And then so I'm dry this real quick though. And then I do think we need a stamping wire. I do think we need it. And for that, I'm gonna use my archival ground espresso. It's just gonna match the browns that I've been using. Um, sorry, I didn't think I was gonna use my stencils with it, my stamp for this one. So I'm gonna come in and probably use this thinner one. I'm just gonna grab. Uh, my step block, which that's right, it's called this M. Right, it's okay. We will use the red. There we go. We use the little ink. It's flat. Right, and we come in and stamp that and then clean it off before grabbing some more stamping. I don't want to get too much paint on my pinky pad. Let's come in, stamp that one down there. It's not stamping on even surfaces, so you I'm never gonna get a full pattern of the flower. Point is just to get some of those patterns. And then... Now we've got that there. Now I'm going to come in with my little girl. Let's grab some of my brown paints.
know, there's a way. Yeah. Yeah, improvising exactly, right? Exactly. Just improvise until you got it. Okay, and then I don't know how well this is going to work though. This still kind of needs to sit bad. Oh no, she works pretty good. That's actually pretty alright. And then I'm just going to come in and stamp. There, she did have the other paint underneath that. There we go. Now we've got, I just added her up there just because I could, and I'm just going to come in with some here and let's spread out that dark under along her edge there. Just to make her stand out just a little bit more. And all of the patterns. So it is a very busy page, like normal, but um, I do tend to see that just a little bit. I'm going to go to remove some of that. And then I'm just adding it a little bit more liquidy so that we can see the different layers in there. So we can also see like the first bits and pieces we did. What I might do is I'm just going to grab this one back, our original stencil, and hold up before we do it though. Dry what we've got. So we we'll try that there. I'm just going to come in and with this stencil just get a few more of these patterns back in that we've kind of lost a little bit over uh, the course of the class, like over the course of layers.
Yeah, so the purple mixes well with the colours. You've just got to be like a little bit experimental. Like, even though sometimes you think things won't work and they will, and then sometimes you think things will work and they won't, just up. It's all about experimentation. It's just about trying things out to see if it will work or not. Um, I am trying not to get the butterflies in this case here, so I'm just being really careful to unzip the patterns. And that's just by me putting a little bit on the tip. And then, oh, so now we've got that one there. Come in and grab the extra line paste I've got on. My partner. So by using the modeling paste, it's just gonna be a little bit thicker than what it, the gesso would be. We use gesso to do this bit. I'm going to come back in with some of my brown again. Just lightly highlight those bits. We just need a little bit more of this color. Probably it looks like a real mess, but I just feel it's not so messy. Yes, but anyway. Okay, and just before we finish off. Where's that skewer that I had yellow that I moved through this right. I'm just going to come in with this pinky color and just oof.
Here's a few dots. This is just the final touches. I will look it up in a second for you to see. I'm going to feel the results of And they're the same kind of pointless, but just. Here's what it means, I think. Right. <laughs> And I think it's nearly done. Kind of looks like a mot sort of color right now. Mm. I don't know. Let's see. What do you guys think? I think it's done. I know it kind of looks a little bit like vomit. Yeah, I think the green. Maybe we do need to add. One minute. The green is a bit of a surprising color. Just give me a second. We've got a bit of mush happening. Just need to get. Bit more of some form coming into play here. And then maybe just. Then hmm, I think it needs a bit more white. So I'm just trying to balance it because it looks completely different from what it does when you sit down. Um, 
Just need some white paint, some gesso, so much when I do that, yeah. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, it all just depends. And then I do think I just need to come in here and make it. In pieces, It's starting to get some form again, which is nice. Most pieces go for the knuckle stage. This depends on how long you've got getting on for that stage. Mm. Hold up, let me just stick it on the locks nozzle. And now I do think it just needs some flicking. Right. See? Only a bit of effort to balance it. Oh, we're about half an hour over. Shoot, sorry people. I do try and stick between the in the hour, but 
have not done that very successfully today. And then just go and now I think Pearl Golden Age our comic. Sorry, just had to. I don't know if the pearl one will be the correct color one. I just need to find the right Golden Age one. Here it is. the incandescent one because it's clear just to add my glitter which I do think it needs just a little bit of out of it so let's see how much I can get. Right, and hold up. I think we're done. So let me just lift that up to show you. So I don't know if you can see the glitter too well, but that's it on the side there, and then. Here's the page up close. So you can see all the little layers that have gone into it. See where the glitter is and everything. So that there is our art journal page today. And once it dries, we can put it back into the binder and we're all good. And look, it didn't barely any of it seeped through to the other side, which means that this is high quality paper. So we can have great fun with this on for the next year or so with this art journal so thank you all for coming and I shall see you all on Thursday for uh, next week's class have a great day oh and uh I think I was supposed to remind you of something but I can't remember what it was um but stay posted for it because I'm sure dad will comment about what I was supposed to remind you of but thank you all for coming and have a great week and and I'm sorry this class went over a little bit but um see you all next week Bye.